Hello Targ, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it's time for another Orc Mode workout and today was Dynamic Effort Bench Press Day. Uh, pretty good workout, happy with everything. Uh, but just a quick reminder for those of you who enjoy these videos, please remember to click like down below. Help me keep the likes higher than the dislikes. And on to the training. This was, again, same sort of percentages I've been running, changed bars. Um, I'm really struggling with the buffalo bar to get it tight enough at the bottom without looping a bunch of extra stuff. It's just easier and more straightforward to get the bands appropriate for a normal barbell. And I don't necessarily need the extra range of motion. I can always do that on other days. I'm doing dips and things at the moment. I'm not worried about it. So I went ahead and just did it this way. Now, looking at the speed work, I'm happy with the footage. Pleasantly surprised because it felt so much slower uh, when I was doing it, especially with the fives. Now, a lot of the fifth reps, you'll notice, though, that they do slow down for the lockout. On that final rep, I'm just struggling to lock that heavy band tension. And for those curious, that's 115 pounds of bands. So, as far as the speed work goes, people always say, well, your speed work does need work. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Probably be the only way I get to a 400-pound bench, either, will be to get faster. But, as I always say, the only way to get there is practice, but we don't need to change percentages. And, and I understand why some people feel that way. I understand that certain people market it that way who are good coaches, but it's never been necessary. We can always run the base percentages and just work on getting faster with those. It's not necessary to make a lot of changes to the conjugate templates just because you think something should be different. It's still proven method. So... Uh, again, for those curious, so I'm running uh, 5x5 with 47% one rep max and 33% band tension. Now, obviously, I'd like to run these in waves eventually, like the squatting. But again, it comes down to the, to the speed. And a lot of times, it's not necessary to run the benching in waves, particularly when you're not fast and you're running a ton of band tension. Although, like I said, looking at the footage today, these are actually a little bit faster than I thought. They look better than they felt. They look better than they felt. Uh, but speed work is hard. Like, it's the most difficult days. It's way harder than maxing out. Way harder. And yes, that first rep is always slow. A lot of people are always will say that. They're like, Jason, wouldn't your bench be better if you could if you didn't do such a slow eccentric rep on the first rep or on your maxes? It's like in theory. But if you guys know a way to train that, that I haven't figured out in my years and years and years of trying, feel free to explain it to me. But it better be something I haven't tried already. I've never been able to do it. I've never been able to do a fast first rep. And I actually concentrated on it for over a year. I really, really did my best to perfect it. And what you guys see on the first rep is the result of me practicing it. It used to be even slower, but that's that's just what it is. I struggle to get into a groove. I have to control the eccentric. Uh, you know, we deal with it. I got a 352 close grip the other day that way. And we went over to dips. First set's always rough. Dips always like, the first set always looks like crap. And they feel like crap, and I struggle to get in my groove. I struggle with the range of motion, and then they get easier. Uh, I decided to pull the chains, just run them straight. I'm like, you know what, let me just get the full range of motion. I'm going to do more tricep work anyways. And because I don't feel like doing overhead pressing yet, we'll just do lots of dips and we'll get the full range of motion, get some extra chest, work on my triceps. And I'm doing plenty of delt work with all the laterals. Ten sets of laterals every week, pretty much limit sets. It gives me the extra delt work, plus I do tons of rear delts. So I'm fine, I'm not worried about the overhead pressing for now. I want to keep my shoulder health on point and assess how much overhead pressing I need later. Uh, but dips are something that I've, uh, again, always kind of enjoyed. And I feel like for a secondary exercise right now, for just putting thickness where I need it, they're great for triceps, which are my biggest weak link. Builds the chest, we can move a lot of weight. Puts the spine in traction, so I'm just going to run dips for just a little bit. And yes, I'm having to figure out how to get over to the camera. It's just easier for me to come over and turn the camera on and off than to try to unload it and come over and edit more and more footage. Uh, you know, it's what it is. But, uh, 
did 90 pounds for a 5x5. Five five. And we'll work on it. We'll see if we can build them up from here. We've been doing on the chains. And I don't really don't do reps this low until recently. As you guys notice, the first rep always takes me a bit to get into it to start getting deep. It's always kind of a feeler. And it's just, again, the nature of heavy dips. But we'll work on, on building it up from here. And yeah, it was challenging. Like 5x5 five five at, at 90 pounds at my body weight was fairly challenging today, particularly after speed benching. And that's what gets me. It's, it's not a first exercise. It's not a first exercise. <laughs> Sorry, the belt looks funny there. I'm laughing. That's not butt cheek. That's, that's my low back. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, God. The trolls will have fun with that one. I don't even care. There's a, just a point where I just don't, I don't care anymore. I'm just going to train. I'm going to do my thing. I'm a coach. Uh, people are starting to notice, hey, a little fewer videos coming up. Yeah, I just, I don't feel like uploading that much. I have tons of videos. I have like 90 something videos ahead, but there's no need for me to kick videos out right now. YouTube's not paying a great amount still. Uh, after COVID, this is not really my primary business at this point. Coaching has become, and again, not that worried. I'm going to keep making videos, obviously. We're going to keep rolling with it. But, you know, I'll do an occasional current event for you guys. Because those seem to do well, it draws in some, some controversy, but I'm going to be respectful in them. Um, but I don't want to center on watching YouTube videos. I just don't. I, I have no interest in watching YouTube fitness Unless, like, I could make another hundred plus thousand dollars a year doing it. It's not worth it. I just can't stand it. And I know people say, well, that's hypocritical. You're making videos and we watch yours. And, and that's great. If you guys enjoy YouTube fitness, that's great. You're my audience. I don't. I can't stand it. And so unless I'm going to make a lucrative, disgusting amount of money to waste hours every day watching a bunch of clowns who don't know anything about training and critique them, then it's not worth it. So... I don't care, but I'll occasionally do one. I already, I think I have another one I'll cover. Just kind of current events in the fitness world and things that are big deals that people care about that they send me. But it needs to be something reasonably, reasonably big deal. Um, and so that's what I'll do. I'll do a little bit of that. I'm still obviously uploading. They're not quite as frequent. And maybe I'll kick a bunch out if... YouTube increases the ads or anything, uh, I might kick out four videos a day for a little while again. I have them saved up. It's not really an issue. But at this point for me, it's just about putting out some good information, being consistent, doing my Q&As, keeping my own training vlogs going for you guys. Because a lot of people, these are always been a big segment. These are always consistently watched. People want to know how people train. I'm the only person who documents their training. Uh, but these are JM presses. I did five sets of, I tried to get 10, but a couple of sets I only got eight. A lot of people are trying to understand this. This is a slightly better angle. I can only do so much, guys. I am limited in camera angles inside of a building unless I go to that goofy fish eye lens. So I can't give you a side shot. My rack is bolted. The back half of the rack is bolted to the plank. I can't just turn my rack to show you. And if I put the camera in closer, you're going to have like half the size of frame. But... For those who, who don't understand, the bar is lowered above your face. Okay, JM Press. And also people said, can you do a tutorial? Why, JM, JM Blakely has a phenomenal tutorial. Like, why, why do you need another tutorial? He shows you how to do the JM Press. It's a great video. I mean, I could do one, but, you know, at a certain point, what's the point? When someone else has done something better... Do you really need to redo it to make 30 bucks, 50 bucks, <laughs> you know, <laughs> come on, just go watch this video. Someone who actually knows what they're doing, you know, instead of most of the clowns on here. But yeah, uh, triceps. And I may rotate these out and go back to the other Skull Crushers next workout. The main thing is challenging limit sets for the triceps. But I think for now, I'm definitely finding more close grip pressing, more dips. Probably do a little bit more board pressing. 
and a lot of tricep work. And I think that's going to continue to keep my bench moving. We've seen a good, really good PR recently on the bench. Everything else is PRing. But you guys will also notice too, volume has to be a little more limited right now. Why? Not in a calorie surplus. Not in a calorie surplus. And as I very, very slowly trim down, and I think that's the, the point that people miss. Um, when they're like, well, you said slow cutting. I, I don't know what you guys think the word slow means. You know, there's people who think a pound a week is slow. A pound of fat a week is insane. That is super fast for an athlete who needs to maintain performance and make performance gains. No, it's not going to be that fast. Just going to slowly keep working down to 215 and then assess. All right. Keep doing all my GPP, keep doing my conditioning, keep making gains, keep hitting PRs. Because I've lost weight and hit PRs. And we'll lose more weight and hit PRs. But it's going to be a slow process. I'm, I'm not concerned with dropping 20 pounds of body fat overnight. Okay? It's not going to happen. And, and I made that very, very clear early on. I don't know why some people didn't understand. I thought I made that very clear. When I say slow, I mean slow. And intentionally so. Because again, we have to continue to make progress. There's no point in cutting if you're not going to progress during it. Like, well, why? Why are we losing progress? We don't train to lose progress. And we did the inverted rows with the axle bar, which again, I've said I need to do these again for my grip strength. All right, I need to make sure the next time we do a deadlift, we get a big PR. We got a good PR the other day. We got a good PR the other day. But we need to keep them moving. And so the only way to do that is going to be more grip work. Like grip is, again, I had done tons of grip work and I had three weeks of a little lactose in the grip work. And I felt like on that deadlift PR, the grip was the limit. Like I got the PR, but I knew that my grip was a little dicey. And that if I tried for another PR, I probably was strong enough to do it. But my grip wasn't. And so therefore, it would have been a fail. And people got to quit making excuses like that. Look, you, you, if you have a weak link in a lift, you're just not strong enough to, to lift that lift. Accept it. Fix the weak link. I know that for another deadlift PR, I needed a little more grip that day. So we rotate back in the stuff that we know really built my grip, that really made my grip feel strong very, very quickly. Okay, and I'll be ready for the next deadlift day. We'll be ready for it. Plan. Right, And I did these laterals. And what did I say before? As I was doing the video last time, like I didn't just realize I could have just used my kettlebell. It's so much more comfortable than the other thing I was using. Like it's because all my kettlebells, I only have one of each size. And no, you can't even get these the same set again. They're out of stock and everything else. They're insanely priced. I'm not paying what kettlebells cost right now. I care how much I've got to spend in my home gym. A lot of this stuff is overpriced right now. I'm not paying it. I can do them one arm, and the one arm is more comfortable. I just realized, I mean, I have all these five-pound increments. So this is actually a hair heavier. According to what it should be, this is two pounds heavier than what I did last time, and I got more reps. So we'll get into the groove. So I did 12 to 15. I got 12 on the first set, and then I did 15 on the next few. Uh, so once I get past 15 for all five sets, consistently, we'll go up to the next kettlebell. Go up five pounds. But this will handle a little bit of fluff. A little bit of fluff that I need for my shoulder, for my upper trap. All right, everything else has been fairly heavy today. It's all real work. Speed work, moderately heavy work. Everything in the 5 to 8. And then some 10, 5 to 10. These would be a little higher rep. And that's fine for delts. Um, for things like lateral raises, this is where we've just got to be honest about the weight we're using. And even doing them one arm at a time so you're supported. Going slow. This is going to be a little bit different. This is a, the sort of exercise that you have to treat this way. Even, even for performance purposes. Because why would we do this? We want to build the delts up. We need the delts for support musculature. Do we really care about concepts like myofibular versus sarcoplasmic growth or any of these different things? Do we care that much about rate coding? 
No, we just need them to get a bit thicker. I, I just need bigger shoulders in the right places to give me more support for my shoulder girdle for my, my lifts, particularly for benching. This will do the job. It's easy to do. It's annoying and time consuming. I don't enjoy stuff like this, by the way. People are a lot of times can say what they want where you don't like this sort of fluff and fluff. No, I don't. It still has its place even for the strength athlete in limited amounts. But I don't enjoy it. It's not fun. It's tedious. And I'm putting it on camera because people are like, well, if you're doing this stuff, why don't you show it on camera? Okay, well, fine. We'll show this stuff. We don't need to see all my restoration days. We don't need to see all my, my GPP anymore. I'm, I'm doing it. It should be obvious I'm doing it. My quads are always bigger. And you guys don't see me doing much in the way of real quad work, so obviously I'm doing something. And squats are going up. So, you know, obviously I'm, I'm dragging a sled and all that stuff. You guys have seen the sled. So, I don't need to put all that up on camera. I just don't care. There's a point where I don't care. Um, you know, people will pull the accountability thing. I am the most accountable lifter on the entire internet at this point. Okay. No one has filmed more of their training and bought calibrated plates to do all of it with and all this other stuff. I've done put up DEXA scans in the past. Uh, I'm, I'm just done with anything to prove. I've done more accountability than anybody else out there. I just don't care. Anyone who says that I, I haven't been accountable with stuff at this point in the game after all that, after blogging every single main workout for an extremely long period of time. Buying calibrated plates, spending my money on it, DEXA scans. I just, there's a point where if that's not good enough for people, then nothing is. Literally nothing is good enough to prove anything to anyone at that point. Until we go back into competition. But then that's its own beast. We'll deal with that when we get there. But again, people kind of have that idea that, oh, you're never going to compete again. You think I'm going to train this hard and lift the numbers that I lift to never compete again? You've lost your mind. I'm just not going to tell you guys, and I've explained why. You're not going to get any info about it. It's just, it'll happen when it happens. Then what? Then we'll have that accountability along with years and years of every single workout okay what more could you possibly ask for what could you ask for from a lifter who's putting out info i just don't see what more anyone could ask it's reasonable at that point all right guys but that's really all i have to say on that today i hope it's been informative and i will talk to you guys next time